Okay, so EQ mixer view, EQ channel view. But there's a third type of mixer view that you can use, and that's called frequency gain view. Okay, and to access that, you hold down the EQ button, the store button, and while you're holding it down, you press the eighth pot as if it's a button, right? Just press the top of it, and you're now into frequency gain mode, and the display changes to show F. G. Okay, now in frequency gain mode, the top row of pots is the frequency control for each band of the channel EQ, eight bands. The faders is the gain, or in the case of the high cut and the low cut, the dB octave for the eight frequency bands. And the top row of buttons are the bypass or on off for the eight frequency bands. Okay, so all off, all on. Okay, now I've knocked out the low cut and high cut. Uh, it's quite an interesting EQ mode. Um, I'll knock out the low shelf and the high shelf, and um, now we just We've only got the four peak EQs in the middle switched on, okay? These are the frequencies and these are the gains. And it's quite graphic in the way it works. In other words, if I make this shape with the faders, that's what I get on screen. You know, I get peak, cut, peak, cut, or boost, cut, boost, cut. And I get the same thing here, boost, cut, boost, cut. Now you've got no access to the Q controls in this frequency gain mode. You have to do those manually, as and when required. Okay, which is not a huge pain. There you go. Okay, so boost, cut, boost, cut, cut, boost, etc. Okay, and um, these are the frequencies. That's the frequency for peak one. Peak two, peak three, peak four. It's quite an interesting little mode because you can do things like adjusting the gain, cutting or boosting of more than one frequency band at the same time, and also you can sweep more than one band at the same time, etc. There's all sorts of things you can do with it. Anyway, that's another alternative EQ view that you can go into. And this is a channel based EQ view, meaning that um, all these controls, the gains and the frequencies and the bypasses, are controlling the bands of the channel EQ for the selected channel. Okay. Once you've gone into fre frequency gain uh, view, you can change the channel and you're then, you don't need to close the frequency gain view. The, the channel EQ stays open and it just updates to whichever ch channel on the mixer you've selected and then you're editing that channel's EQ using the frequency gain mode right, or the frequency gain view. Okay so that's a frequency gain view Okay, and to step out of it you just press any button including the EQ button itself, any of these four buttons and you're back into normal EQ mode. EQ mixer view, EQ channel view. Okay. So that's frequency gain view. Now, there's a couple of other little things I want to show you, but first I need to let me just get rid of these edits that I just did on that EQ. Well, I'm in channel view actually, so let's step up to the second page and reset all these parameters. Third page, reset. Right. Okay. There's a couple of other little things. Um, now that frequency gain view, if you like it, and you'd like to make that your default EQ view, so that every time you press the EQ button, I mean as it is in standard, you press the EQ button and you go into the, with the first press, the EQ mixer view, and the second press you're in EQ channel view. But if you really like the frequency gain view, there's a way of making it your default EQ view. Right. I'll show you how to do that. You just press the EQ button once, so it's showing the EQ mixer view display, and then you go to your main logic menu, preferences, control surfaces, controller assignments, okay, and your controller assignments, assignments panel pops up, 
and uh, as I say, select the EQ button the first time, so you're in EQ mixer view, and then look over here at the controller assignment parameter panel. And the mode is V pots EQ mixer view, because we're in EQ mixer view. So you drop this mode list down and go down the list and choose V pots EQ frequency gain channel view. Okay. I'll just drag this out of the way. And now when we go into our EQ mode, we go straight into frequency gain view. It's it's our default EQ view. Okay. The only downside is I can't get the button to cycle. You know, in normal EQ mode, you know, you press the button the first time, you get EQ mixer view. You press the button the second time, you get EQ channel view. And once you've put the EQ button into frequency gain as default, you don't get that cycling of the button anymore. I haven't found a way yet to press the button once and get frequency gain view, then press it a second time and get ch EQ channel view. There may be a way, but as of yet, I haven't found it. If I do, I'll come back and make an addendum video showing how to do that. But anyway, you can make frequency gain your default EQ view. Okay. And as soon as you press the EQ button, it goes straight into frequency gain view. All right. So I shall set that back. Again, just make sure that the EQ button is selected and then go to the controller assignments parameter panel here and change the mode back to VPOTS EQ Mixer View. There we are. Let's drag this out of the way. And now we're back in the normal EQ mode. EQ Mixer View, EQ Channel View again. Alrighty. That leaves a couple of little extras I want to show you. Um, I'm going to EQ Channel View. All right, and we'll step up to the second page. So I'm Looking at EQ band 3 and EQ band 4, the first two peak EQs all right, on channel 1. Okay, and the display has popped up. So now, watch this. If I bring back my controller assignments here, like that, and I'll just put them underneath like that there. Okay. Yeah. No, actually, I'll, I'll put it straight over the top. Okay, now, we're on EQ channel view, page 2, so this is EQ band 3, EQ band 4. Okay, so this is the first peak EQ, so I'm going to twiddle its gain control. Okay, and you can see here in the controller assignments, this row is highlighted. V pot 2, the one I just twiddled, is the peak 1 gain, which it is, because we're in the second page of EQ, and look, there you can see... Peak one gain, peak one gain, right? Now, the third pot is the peak one Q factor. So if I twiddle that, look, you see, this row is now highlighted. V pot three, peak one Q factor, because this is the Q. Okay, now, at the moment, if I drag this off again, at the moment, when I twiddle the Q, as I tighten the Q up, the LED display, the more I tighten it, the LED display spills away to the right, the tighter I make the cue. If I turn it counterclockwise, okay, eventually it gets to the, the top where there's just a single dot, and then if I keep widening the cue, the wider I make it, the LED display ladder then spills away in the opposite direction. Okay, so it's like spilling this way for wide cue and spilling that way for narrow cue. Now, you might think, like I do, that that's not a very good visual display of cue width. So it's quite easy to change that. You just go to your controller assignments panel and you twiddle the cue pot for whichever band of the EQ you're working on. You want to change the display, the LED display, so I twiddle this pot and it becomes underlined here, V pot 3, peak 1 Q factor. If I now look at the value panel here, where it says feedback, it's set to automatic. And if I drop that list down, these are all the possible LED display types that I can have for that pot. And only for this pot. We're not editing any of the other pots, just this pot. The Q control for the third EQ band, which is the peak one. 
EQ band, right? So I'm going to change the LED display type or the feedback, as it's called, to Q spread. Okay. And now watch. Now, as I widen the Q, the more I want look much. Okay, it's narrow at the moment. As I start to widen it, turning it counterclockwise, the wider the Q becomes, the more the LED ladder widens. Okay, make it a bit more wider still. Widen it some more, wider still. So when the queue's really wide, the LED ladder is, is wide right round the pot. And as I tighten up the queue, turning it clockwise, the more I tighten it, look, the more that LED tightens up. Tighter and tighter and tighter until at the tightest setting it's just a single dot. So now you've got, uh, this is a much better representation of queue. That's wide queue, and as I get narrower, it gets narrower, okay? So that's how you can choose different LED displays for each pot of each band. Yeah, so you know, you just choose the page, go to the pot for the right EQ parameter for the right band, and twiddle it. And then once you've twiddled the pot, like I'll twiddle the gain there for the peak one, okay, and it becomes highlighted. And then you can change its feedback type here. You can experiment with all these different types of LED displays. Okay. If you get into a mess, all you have to do is go to the main Logic Pro menu, Preferences, Control Surfaces, Rebuild Defaults. It will set it all back as it was before. Okay. So let me just uh, reset that cue, reset that gain. All right. Step back to the first page of EQ. Okay. Now there's one last thing I've just got time to show you. Okay, now watch this. If uh, I'm going to switch, okay, we're in EQ channel view page one. So this is EQ band one and EQ band two. So this is the low cut and the low shelf. I'm going to switch the low cut on. Now watch the bit down here, the, the frequency of that low cut. Okay. I'll go to the frequency pot and I'm going to start twiddling it. I'm doing it as finely as I can. So, I'm starting to adjust it. Look, 81, 85, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 106. It's, it's, it's going up or down as I turn the pot in little jumps of 3 or 4 hertz. Okay, it's not a very fine resolution. I go to the frequency for the low shelf, it's the same. Look, no matter how finely I try and turn it, 83, 87, 91. 95, 99, 104, 108, 112. You know, it's again jumping at 4 hertz at a time. It's not very fine, the resolution. Okay, well, there's a way of changing that. You want your main setup control, okay, this panel, and go down to the bottom here and look at, look at the third item in the menu of the control surface group at the, at the bottom relative change mode which by default is set to coarse so I'm going to change it to fine all right now watch this low cut frequency again as I tweak it now 79 80 81 82 83 85 86 87 88 so it's much finer now and the same with the low cut frequency so I've changed the fineness, I've changed the relative change mode to fine and now I can turn the pots and edit, you know, change the frequency one hertz step at a time. And actually I'm not quite sure what happens if you change it to the other mode that's full. Let's have a look. Okay. Oh no, that's just doing bloody great jumps. So put it on fine if you want finer resolution when you turn your pots, right? There you go, now it's nice and fine. I'm even getting half hertz steps in there. Okay. Okay, so that's the last little tip. That's all the EQ covered now and uh, let's move on.